to, to fool with all that, then, uh, you know, here at this pandemic, at the beginning, we had that space with, with the ability to, to, to turn it on and, and get going pretty quickly. And so, yeah, it was a blessing that we still had, had that space. It had not been repurposed. Nice. Nice. Gene Banks used to uh, kind of run, did he kind of run that group? That yeah, Gene, uh, Gene Banks. He, he ran that for uh, okay. for quite some time, did a great job. Good. Amy, Amy, you lead the way. I did, uh, but did you say Amy's going to do an intro? Okay, well, very good. Well, uh, hey, over the past two weeks, we've uh, spoken to Decatur Morgan County Tourism President and CEO, Daniel Gibson, and Morgan County Economic Development President and CEO, Jeremy Nails. Uh, today, uh, we're honored to have an esteemed guest from both the, the tourism sector and the business world. President and CEO of Cook's Pest Control and President and Board Chairman of Cook's Muse Cook Museum of Natural Science, uh, my friend, uh, Brian Cook. Brian, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you, Mayor. It's an honor to be invited to, uh, to visit with you for a while, and uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Well, um, so Brian, you're, um, as we understand it, fourth generation of the Cook family to to uh, lead the pest, uh, Cook's Pest Control, and uh, you've served in a, a host of uh, service, sales, management roles uh, throughout the uh, organization, uh, and now assumed uh, the current role as CEO in, in 2017. Um, and then you also, uh, you got development and, and outreach of the Cook Museum of Natural Science, um, which is a state of art natural science museum, and and it's our, you're our neighbor. <laughs> you're downtown Decatur and uh, our neighbor. We're, we're very proud of that. So um, serving as the president of two organizations is uh, no small feat. Uh, tell us more about your your day to day operations from uh, the pest control and the museum perspective. Well, you know, I tell you, <laughs> when we were developing the museum, uh, and I was literally just pinballing back and forth down Fourth Avenue to our office to the museum uh, for meetings a lot. It was um, it was like drinking water out of a fire hydrant, and uh, you you can't you can't do that indefinitely. Um, yeah, and and I'm just so thankful uh, for um, everybody that joined to be a part of that team to to help figure this out and create it, create it from scratch, and uh, now leading it and operating I mean, it's one thing to to build a museum it's another thing, thing to to operate it well and uh, have excellent customer service and build a place that that people uh they they want what you're uh, offering and so uh you know of course uh, scott mayo our executive director and so many other folks there are doing a phenomenal job uh really being the front porch to our community and uh celebrating the fact that life is amazing with the exhibits and the educational programming. Of course, we have the uh, Nature's Table uh, restaurant there that's been uh, very successful and very popular. And uh, the, the retail store that's, uh, that's been a destination as well. So, um, <clears throat> you know, we, we started that project, um, made a decision as a family, uh, really nine years ago, um, to, to not just refurbish the carpet of the original museum or to close it down, but we said, you know, this is a stewardship responsibility. Uh, we, we want to, to take it to the next level, but to do what needs to be done, we can't just do it ourselves. It, it really needs to be a community-wide, a regional nonprofit and, uh, to, to accomplish uh, this, this greater vision. And it needs to be something that's done with excellence at a level that's not just within our little sphere of influence here in North Alabama, but uh, as, as people travel to DC or Chicago, Nashville, Atlanta, Birmingham, you know, it's, it's at a caliber that uh, they would expect going, going anywhere. And so 
um, nine years ago now of, of that, but thankfully uh, I've been able to transition more uh, fully back to uh, Cook's Pest Control uh, as, as opposed to trying to straddle the fence there with, with, with a foot in, in, in both worlds. Um, so, um, you know, was more hands-on throughout the whole process. Now more of uh, chairman of the board role there with the museum. Uh, it is totally, totally separate uh, entities. And, uh, and then with pest control, uh, you're right, you know, gr growing up in and around it, you hear about it at the dinner table and you kind of catch the, the why that you do this in the first place that you care about people. And so my, my role is, as president CEO at Cook's Pest Control, you know, you know it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of meetings and it's a lot of communications. It's a lot of, of um, thinking things through and working with other folks, but um, it's, it's, all in an effort to add value to folks' lives. And whether it's in the residential side of things or the commercial industrial pest control side. Um, and so uh, just trying to help everyone else, all the other leaders here within the company uh, be successful and, and work together to, uh, to accomplish that for our customers. So you, thank you, Brian. And, and you, you mentioned Scott Mayo and I think that's a story in itself where you uh, you had, a, and I, I'm going to say a, um, an executive director. I don't, I'm, what's, what's Scott's? Uh, uh, He's an executive director. For the executive museum. director, okay. Uh, so that, boy, you had an opening there and uh, we're thinking, boy, this is going to be a nationwide search to try to find the right person to come in and, and lead this organization. And it just so happened that uh, the headmaster of Decatur uh, Heritage, um, he had gotten to a point to where he was ready for a new opportunity. And so really just uh, went from one side of the town to the other. And uh, that, that's just amazing that you you found someone here locally. Yeah, you know, it really was. Um, you know, thinking back, uh, you know, I, I, we, we, we were about to start a nationwide search and uh you know he was uh, doing very well where he was and uh loved the people and loved the mission and all that sure i just sure. as as we started thinking through the the type of person to uh to to, to take this and, and and run with it uh you know the the attributes that i came up with of uh you know caring about education caring about families uh, has a business mindset and, um, uh, you know, a servant's heart, servant leadership, being able to, you know, roll your sleeves up and, you know, wipe tables down at lunchtime, but then go into um, to meetings to think uh, strategically about how we position ourselves and communicate uh, with the public and leading internally, all of those things. Uh, I, as I thought about it, I thought, I know somebody. <laughs> and, um, and let me uh, let me reach out and see if uh, uh, you know there's there's any of this that um, just resonates with him. And so uh, it, he's been phenomenal, uh, really done a great job. He's he's you know fit in well with with everyone, hit the ground running, and uh, so just have have all the confidence there. Well, all those attributes that you just named off as you were as you were naming them off, I could. I could say Scott, 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 Scott. I mean, it just uh, of the perfect fit. Yeah. And he's he's you know he's been past chairman of the uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, here with the Decatur Morgan. So uh, you know, known in the community, uh, respected, and and uh, in leadership roles outside of the organization he led. And then now he's um, uh, part of uh, this year's uh, Leadership Alabama class. So he'll be representing our community well uh, throughout the state. I, I hear that's a, a, a wonderful year um, with Leadership Alabama and uh, everything that you're exposed to, the new friends you get to make. Um, we have, we've had quite a few residents to go through the, that, uh, that program. So we're proud that uh, uh, you've afforded them the time to be able to do that. Um, the, uh, I guess the other thing that you talked about um, the, how, how broad um, you wanted to go as far as having folks be a part of the museum during the, um, I guess the, the fundraising portion, investing in the museum, 
being a part of it. And um, of all places, uh, whenever you selected your uh, co-chairs uh, for fundraising, uh, uh, Mark Ben Dixon, uh, who uh, with Dynetics, and then of course uh, Dorothy Davison uh, with Davison Technologies, and uh, those they were not Decatur residents, um, <laughs> you know, and uh, that yeah. worked well, didn't it? You, you know, um, it. it... It's all been an iteration of doing the next right thing, and part part of that process is surrounding yourself with people that are uh, smarter or uh, you know better than you are in a lot of different ways. And uh, we we could have been uh, more honored and proud to have both of those individuals serve on our uh, capital campaign as as co chairs. And uh, you know, geographically speaking, you know they're they're uh, home their their base of operation with their businesses is 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 over in Huntsville and uh you know we said this this museum uh it, it needs to be it's bigger than us it's bigger than our community it's 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 our it's our region's uh museum and it needs to be all of our museum and so I'm so proud that the the museum uh regionalism uh is 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 really taking place and it's alive and well and um, we've never seen, uh, to my knowledge, uh, uh, outside charitable contributions and investments into Decatur, uh, you know, uh, from across the river, or, you know, from, from outside the state, from Birmingham, um, uh, like, like we have, you know, with this project, not, not like a, a business venture, so to speak, but, but that, that true uh, philanthropic, um, you know, community support from without uh, coming in. Uh, it's just been really encouraging, not only for the museum's sake, because um, we, we definitely uh, need it, but um, from the community's sake, from Decatur's, uh, Morgan County's sake, uh, just a lot of positive signals there that I see. You know, I attended some of the events that they were a part of, and uh, they really uh, had a heart for education. And knowing that the museum would be an educational um, opportunity when everyone comes in to, to visit and all that. And they, uh, it was very apparent that that's uh, kind of what um, had them so uh, excited about being a part of that, that opportunity. So certainly thrilled about that. So the, the museum was first opened, as we understand, in, in 1968 and uh, began as a tr uh, training tool for pest control employees. The new expansive location opened in uh, June of 2019. Uh, and we are so thankful. You could have, you're the eighth largest or somewhere about uh, pest control company in the nation. And you could have opened it anywhere and you decided to open it here in Decatur. And we're so thankful that you made this amazing investment in our community. Um, for those at home that, that may not be familiar, um, Kind of describe to us the the mission and offerings of the the museum and why you chose to locate it. Sure, yeah, the museum is a natural science museum, and so uh, our our mission is to engage, excite, and educate visitors about the natural created world around us. So we're looking at the observable world and celebrating the fact that life is amazing, and so. Um, uh, we have the uh, exhibits that you can go through, and we have, uh, you know, live animal terrariums with, uh, you know, endangered hellbender salamanders and diamondback terrapins, um, all the way to, in our oceans exhibit, uh, we have uh, Kale, the endangered uh, Kemp's Ridley sea turtle, uh, and that's the first, that's the only sea turtle um, uh, on display with, um, you know, in human care in the state, from my understanding. So, uh, you know, that's that's been, uh, you know, really exciting to see that uh, addition to the to the museum family um, last summer as we opened back up from the pandemic. Uh, so there's this live animal component that's really exciting, and then uh, the uh, the focus of the exhibits being. Uh, North Alabama and the state of Alabama, but then really it expands to North America biomes. 
Um, and then, of course, uh, special events uh, spaces. We have the restaurant I mentioned that's open to the public, and we have a great uh, you know, curbside pickup and, and catering and all that that we've done. We've even catered over to Madison and uh, Huntsville uh, now, folks that are that are asking for us to come come that far with it. So um, it, it's been wonderful. And then the store as a destination, especially during the holidays, uh, was was um, you know really um, a sight to see. Uh, so then we have our classrooms upstairs. We do uh, different programs for you know all the different uh, age ranges, all the way through to uh, adults, and um, you know they're doing a great job, just really creating new, fresh content. Um, you know, everything from learning how to pin insects uh, and to, you know, squid dissection and, uh, you know, learning about, uh, you know, earth and its core and, and magnetism and all kinds of things. So it's, it's been really neat to see the, the, the project come together, the building and all of the components, but to see it come to life with, with, with people um, engaging uh, it has just been wonderful. So thank you, Brian. So uh, this past year has been a, a, a constant effort to shift and adapt. Um, how has mm -hmm. the, the Cook Museum approached that? You know, you know, we've tried to approach it like we, we, we approached everything at the museum, and that's really with a positive can-do attitude. So the worst or we are in the work uh, industry or one of the worst in, uh, when it comes to, um, you know, global pandemics and economic shutdowns, um, you know, being a tourism destination. Um, so, like I said, it is this positive, proactive approach. Okay, well, well, this has happened. So now about it. School groups aren't um, in the fall. Okay, well, well, what can we do? So one of the things is we, we uh, pivoted in our mindset with programming to say, okay, well, these, these school groups aren't coming, but how can we change this into, uh, community group, uh, community classes? So, you know, if, if there are, uh, you know, families that want to do things in a, in a pod and, and do things, you know, we, we, can, we can still operate within the guidelines and socially distance and, mask and all of these things that uh, that uh, are prescribed for us we can we can still accomplish our mission and do it really well and and provide value and provide um, opportunities for folks especially at a time when they need to get out and and uh, have some some fresh air and and do do something uh, meaningful as a family and so uh, I'm just really really thankful for how we've been able to continue to uh, modify what we're doing, but still have that positive message of, you know, hey, we're we're here uh, when when you're ready to come see us, and um, try to keep the even though we've had to make some some very difficult, uh, you know, cost cutting procedures as every business and nonprofit has during during such a time as this. Um, it it's uh, the the visitor experience is still the same. It's it's at a at a high caliber. It's at a first class experience, and so um, that's been the commitment to um, to to stay on point with our with our mission and the way in which we want to operate, and uh, you know just uh, push through and continue to add value and be meaningful and relevant even during uh, such difficult times as we find ourselves in right now. Well, that's uh, that takes real leadership uh, to to keep the team motivated and, uh, and and give the guests that kind of wonderful experience. I know Sherry and I we renewed our membership, so uh, we we are able to come in and you know at will I guess and uh, enjoy and maybe just go to our favorite exhibit and uh, or one or two or three and and <laughs> fun uh, go through the store. Uh, which, of course, now to the viewers, you need to know uh, that it does not take a ticket to, or a, you know, a, to admission to to visit the store. You can just come in and uh, see all the great things the store has to offer. Uh, wonderful for gifts and other other uh, 
needs. And then, of course, uh, nature's uh, table that is is always fun for fun stop uh, for us being right across the street for lunch. But uh, <laughs> while all these exhibits are um, unique and amazing, uh, do you have a favorite e exhibit at the museum? And if so, what is it and why? You know, that's a great question. Um, you know, that sometimes it changes, but for the most part, uh, I've just always been really excited about our oceans exhibit uh, with the 15,000 gallon saltwater aquarium. Uh, then to, to, to br bring on board uh, an endangered uh, Kemp's Ridley sea turtle that's non-releasable uh, to, to be the forever home of, of that turtle uh, last summer, that was really uh, 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 powerful to see that full the vision come full full circle there. And after all the planning and the design of the tank and the systems and and all that, uh, that was always part of the the desire was to 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 be able to do that sort of thing. And uh, just really uh, satisfying to see all that come to fruition. You know, coming out of a pandemic, or or, or uh, the, the reopening of the museum after being shut down for four months to, to open with that sea turtle, which could live another 50, 70 years, probably in our care. It's going it, you know, to very well outlive me. Um, you know, that was a really encouraging sign that, that you know, we've been entrusted with, with, uh, with something here that uh, uh, is intended to, to be here for a very, very long time and so um you know that that was that was special but now we have uh two uh more new residents in that tank uh two uh, small little uh rays and so you know sometimes they're buried under the sand you have to go look for them uh but but that's 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 a lot of fun the live coral tank the living coral tank is also another special um exhibit because you really have to kind of look closely and see what's in there and there's there's usually some surprises so it's a lot of fun it is and i guess my timing has always been uh, perfect uh because the, the turtle is always on the move whenever i come by uh, <laughs> that's the, good the, okay <laughs> yeah it is and it's but the the tank is just uh or the oceans uh display is uh just uh so colorful and i Thank can you. see why you selected that well, even in the midst of chaos, and, and you and others, uh, other members of the museum staff have joined together for uh, what we call the Turtle Bridge Project. Uh, can you can you share a little bit uh, about uh, this with our viewers? Sure. The, so I work with Jeannie Payne at the museum. She's our director of development, and um, she has a, a, a whole career of uh, being engaged in our community and making it a better place and bringing people together to to, to, to take care of our community and to, to, to have vision there and to to uh, collaborate. And so uh, she was a perfect fit to, to bring on board with the museum uh, and, and with her background in city school system and education. Uh, but but she she uh, has continued to have this this heart and this passion for uh, uh, opening up the river uh, where to decay, or you know, we're known affectionately as the River City, and I think that's a great uh, you know brand for our city. I think um, the the that uh, we use it um, well with as as industry's grown. I think that's been a benefit to our community. I think we can uh, share it with residential and uh, commercial, recreational industrial use that all that can can uh, work together and so she's trying to spearhead this initiative to to, to bring a, a number of folks together to look at all the different ways that we can connect with the river uh you know looking at at um uh different aspects of of the connectivity where can you see it where can you um uh, uh experience it and uh how do we enhance what we already have, because it, it really is a blessing. Uh, sometimes for, for a lot of the city, it may be out of sight, out of mind. And so, you know, how do we, how do we invite and in a, in a safe and uh, fun way folks to, to enjoy it? 
Well, Jenny certainly uh, brings a lot of enthusiasm to everything that she's involved in. And uh, we again appreciate uh, her leadership as uh, we start trying to find ways to, to do more along our, um, our river. Uh, we're at the, the widest part of the Tennessee River here in Decatur and uh, we're, it's, the river's it's been very good to the RC and we're thankful for that. Well, um, so what are you the most excited to see in Decatur in the, as you look forward to in, over the next 10 years? You know, I don't know that it's 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 not necessarily one um, project necessarily that I, that I'm excited about or or a initiative. I would say that I'm most excited about the momentum, the positive attitude, the positive momentum that I'm really starting to see and hear uh, you know take place. Uh, an example of that momentum growing is is folks that have been mentioned um, you know in the paper with. You know Steve Armistead and 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 others who you know, grew up here in town, uh, went off to Nashville and did wonderful things, and now is uh, bringing uh, folks along with him back to his hometown to uh, to look at ways to to invest. Uh, and and it's not it's not to to uh, you know some some folks they, they they come in and they invest only to to pull what they can out of the community. But with Steve, I see somebody who sincerely cares about the 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 uh nostalgia that he had growing up here he cares about the people he has relationships with the people here and he's invested long term uh, to make a meaningful difference not just a return and so uh th that wouldn't have happened if we didn't have the momentum building over time of people in decatur and uh city leadership uh and reinvesting in ourselves so obviously the museum is a is an example of that but also, I'd say the railroad depot, uh, Steve would tell you that that was a big uh, signpost that says, hey, Decatur's serious about investing in itself. So if, if, the, if they're going to invest in themselves, then I'm going to consider that as well. So, uh, you know, I think uh, there's talk about going to the bond market and uh, at, at, a, at a strategic time right now to, to invest in uh, uh, certain projects and I don't know what that would be necessarily, but I'm definitely in favor of of the idea of that and um, continuing to, to invest in our community because the success breeds success and our region is is just on fire. It's exploding and there's such an opportunity for Decatur and I see it taking place now with you know Jeff Parker's development on the river, uh, upper river. So there's residential that's taking place. Uh, you know, I think um, you know more and more. Uh, we'll see commercial uh, developments. You know, not only folks being successful as entrepreneurs and in business and industry that's existing, but also, you know, I hope to see uh, outside firms relocate to Decatur because of the quality of life that we afford. You know, from our our parks and rec and uh, the amenities, the um, uh, easy access with our infrastructure, uh, you know, all of that uh, together, just the, the, the being easier to do business with and uh, just an enjoyable place to raise a family uh, as well as uh, do business. And so uh, just that, that positive forward momentum that I'm seeing, you know, and of course, a lot of, you know, some of that goes back to you know, establishing the DDRA, Decatur Downtown Redevelopment Authority, and uh, focusing on that, investing in that initiative. Um, you know, uh, just just all of that, uh, you know, started leading to the Arts College, you know, with Alabama Center for the Arts. And, and now with the uh, exactly, you know, and that, and that helps with, uh, you know, the Moe's and Mellow Mushroom downtown and, and on and on and on. And so uh, just, uh, all in all, I'm really proud of our community and the, the positive, proactive approach that I'm seeing people take. Uh, so uh, looking forward to, to seeing, you know, where we can be in 10 years. You know, when you think about the concept of the museum and seven and a half years later from that decision, you know, the impact that that's made uh, just in that area, not to mention 
other things that have taken place. When we look at the next five to 10 years, uh, I, I'm, I'm really excited. Yeah, you know, you, you, just to piggyback on what, everything that you just said, um, I finally get to say next month, uh, but next month we hope to begin site work for our new overpass out on Highway 20, which will connect the north side and the, to the south side of Highway 20 uh, and allow for development. And uh, that's right there by five, or 65, um, where a, a lot of, we're gonna see big increases in traffic counts through there. And mm -hmm. I think that you'll see development, uh, mixed use development to include, of course, commercial. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the, the work that's being done uh, by our uh, community uh, leaders on uh, the 6th Avenue corridor, which um, I think that will be one of those areas where you'll see the council uh, probably go to the bond market uh, to take care of that. But this is a fun city council to work with, and uh, they're, they're very eager to make some of the changes that, that you just addressed. And then finally, uh, I'm sure you've had an opportunity to see the before and after pictures of uh, downtown and the revitalization that's taken place. Well, as a matter of fact, the uh, the museum is in there, uh, the, the, the book that uh, Rick put together. Uh, but we continue to see transformation and we're we're thrilled about that. Well, look, uh, Brian, thank you so much for uh, for joining us today. I know you're very busy. And uh, uh, so who's your pick for the Super Bowl? Uh, you know, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, we'll just have to wait and see what happens, I think. Okay. I'm looking forward, forward to a good game. Uh, that's right. I think it's kind of a toss-up there, and a lot of folks are excited about seeing a 43-year-old quarterback play in his own hometown. Well, uh, to our viewers, just remember that you can sign up for our newsletter by texting Decatur to 42828. Our next edition comes out, guess when? Today is when it comes out. And then our next municipal update will be Friday at 3 p.m. And we'll see you then. Brian, thank you again for joining us. Well, thank you. It was my pleasure. Thank you for the invitation.